hello, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Matteo Renzi, and uh, I'm a um, member of um, FII board. I'm a former politician, and uh, I'm very happy to be here with uh, Joshua Fink. Uh, former politician means former mayor of Florence. That is the most important thing, and also former prime minister of Italy. And uh, Josh is uh, one of the most uh, brilliant guys uh, I met. is uh, um, an American guy who tried to invest in one sector who is, uh, in my view, one of the most interesting, uh, who is the life science, healthcare, healthcare biotech, uh, and uh, similar. So Joshua, we, we are here to try to give an answer about the relevance of the uh, healthcare sector because after pandemic, everyone also in politics understand the importance of healthcare investment. But if we think about the last 20, 25 years, we, we saw how it's important to change our business model and our open mind about healthcare and life science. And I think you try to do in this direction. Why? and uh, in what direction? Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. I think to contextualize the opportunity of healthcare, let's put some numbers around it. Healthcare represents 20% of US GDP and approaching 15% of global GDP. And we're fortunate that we live in an era where there's massive amounts of scientific change that's happening in our lifetime. Let's think back to 23 years ago. We couldn't sequence the human genome. Now we can. The cost has gone down by 99% over that period. You have Jennifer Doudna winning the Nobel Prize uh, for utilizing CRISPR. You have a researcher in Kyoto University winning the Nobel Prize for saying you could take any cell in the human body and reverse back its molecular clock, opening up a whole window for rejuvenative medicine, let alone data our ability to collect huge amounts of data in a medical and at-home setting, our ability to analyze that data using AI and machine learning. So we stand at the precipice of a revolution. We stand at the precipice where human healthcare outcomes over the next decade can be dramatically, dramatically changed. When I go to my doctor's office in New York, of course I have a digital health record, but when I'm sitting on that doctor's bench, that doctor is doing largely, no discredit to him, he's a great doctor, but he's doing almost all the same things to me, the same analysis, the same diagnostics as he did 15 years ago. That will all change over the next 10, 15 years. This will create huge amounts of enterprise value and opportunity for those investors here in the room. It'll create huge development opportunities for nations such as Saudi Arabia, and most importantly, the mission and the impact on human health outcomes, on extending longevity, on improving human, uh, human health, health outcomes. Uh, the impact is huge. And at the end of the day, back to governments, Matteo, this is really something that governments need to get their heads around because governments are responsible ultimately for roughly 95% of all healthcare bills globally. So governments need to stay on top of the science. Governments, like what is being done here in Saudi Arabia, need to work to bring not just top quality therapeutics, diagnostics and devices, but bring the supply chain here. Manufacture here in Saudi Arabia, which is being done. Help medical tourism here in Saudi Arabia. As we know, one of the biggest bottlenecks in drug development is human trials. Bring human trials for cutting edge therapies here to Saudi Arabia, help the population get better, help advance these medicines and bring them to market cheaper, faster, better. This is a huge way that governments, it's a huge way that Saudi Arabia can be a real leader here in this revolution that is upon us. That is very interesting. Also because I speak as a politician, we have a problem when we discuss about healthcare and investment in the future as politicians. There is here an Italian guy who is my friend Maurizio, who knows very well how it's easy for politicians, particularly in Europe, to think only about day by day. 
you have a generation of leader who really are not leader, are followers. They think only to the thing important for the result. And so healthcare is for, by the way, is normal. The most difficult things to invest because healthcare means to think about next generations. But politicians, particularly in the Western societies, think about next elections, not next generations. And next elections are not in two generations, but in two years. When you think about next election, you are lucky. Because there are also a part of leaders who think only about the next post, next tweet. And there is a votation every day, election every day, who is the number of likes you receive on Instagram, number of likes you receive on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. That is a problem because the people don't look about the future. So just to make an example for my experience, and then I have a question for Josh. When I became prime minister, the first meeting was the, man the manager of um, Treasury, Treasury Ministry. They arrived in my office and they told me, Prime Minister, and I asked them, please give me the numbers of budget because I came from a, a little experience in my city. So I was very strong and uh, committed to check every single number, every single number of budget. So I check, 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 check. And when I finished the discussion, the manager of... Uh, Treasury told me, we have a problem. I'm Italian prime minister. If I have only one problem of budget, I'm happy. It's impossible, one problem. Our problem is in Italy, we live too much. Because it's true. We are the number two in the ranking in terms of expectation of life after Japan. That means that with the crisis of demography, we have a problem, and the first message from the manager of Treasury is we have a problem for pensions. But really, that is not our first problem, because we have the problem of pensions, of course, by the way. But we have more complicated a problem in healthcare, because we have a crisis of demography, we reduce the population. When I was born in 75, in Italy, 1.1 million babies born. Now, last year, less than 0 0.4 million babies. This is not a decline. This is a collapse of demography. That means we change totally, deeply, the level of medicine. And for that, I think uh, finance have to understand how it's important to uh, invest in new technologies. Because new technology, as Jimmy Diamond said very clearly in the round table about the new compass, only technologies could save, not demography, not other. So why you decide to invest and why you have a particular model, business model in your initiative, uh, Joshua? Well, Matteo, I think you bring up two things that I want to reflect on. The first is the role, and this is not talked about much because it's not politically popular to do so, but the role, the, the essential role that government has to fund non-applied science, not just in biology, but in chemistry, in physics, across science. And this is very hard for politicians across the Western world because the benefits generally are not seen in one's political cycle, let alone in one's lifetime. But we think about so many, if not all, of the advances we've had in science fundamentally, they've come from non-applied science. And that non-applied science, private capital is not going to step up and fund it. That funding needs to come from governments. And this is something, both here in Saudi Arabia and across the world, people need to speak about this more. The necessity to fund non-applied science. Because you won't notice the difference in your lifetime, but for your children, your grandchildren, society will decline, productivity will decline if you don't. Mattel, your second point is exactly where we focus. So as we know, life expectancy has gone up dramatically over the past 100 years. With all the new advances in medicine, longevity and the focus on longevity will only continue to increase. But if we only focus on longevity and we don't focus on health span, 
our fundamental liabilities, our pension liabilities, will continue to grow and to grow. So if we have a demographic crisis, we have to get the people to be working to be first healthy and improve their health spans so they can be healthy, so they're not a burden on the system, and that they can, you raise the pension age. So you raise the pension age and they can be productive members of society, paying into the pension schemes over much longer periods of time. That's how you change the actuarial science and make a very difference to the pensions in the West. I think we have, as FII, a very good uh, level of discussions about that point. We will continue in uh, Miami, in, uh, sorry, first of all, in Hong Kong, uh, next December, and then in Miami next February, because uh, as FII board, we think that is one of the key points for the future. But just uh, to, uh, before to finish, uh, I have a question, the final question for you, Joshua. When I was, uh, uh, this morning, uh, I um, interviewed uh, Jared Kushner discussing about uh, geopolitics, uh, very complicated uh, time, as you imagine. And we joked with uh, Jared, last year, we were exactly in the same stage to discuss about geopolitics. This year, the same stage to discuss geopolitics. How many things are changed only in one year? The question for you is that what number, what type, what things you believe could change from here to the next year? Because uh, if I think about my role as politician, I know in 2024 we have a lot of elections. Election in uh, Europe, election in America, election in UK, election in Russia, but election in Russia little different, uh, more predictable, uh, more predictable than, uh, than uh, other, other elections. Uh, we will have a great number of news from here to the next year. And in your sector, what you expect from today to the next year in that sector? Well, Mateo, you bring up a, a very interesting point. Politics, government moves at a much more rapid pace than biology does, than science, and the translation of that science to therapeutics, diagnostics, and devices that go into humans and make an impact to human health outcomes. It takes a long time. Having said that, even in a 12, when we're sitting here again at FII number eight in 2024, there will be a lot that will change. We will have data readouts of many different therapies that are going into humans. We will understand a lot more the potential for rejuvenative medicine. I think there's gonna be a lot of work done on the manufacturing front. How can we manufacture cutting edge cell and gene therapies for cheaper? How can countries like Saudi Arabia, there's an announcement with, with a particular company, start to work to manufacture vaccines to be resilient for vaccines here in Saudi Arabia? I think we're gonna get kind of a lot of developments as it relates to AI and generative AI and the application to drug discovery, the application to imaging analysis, the application to development, the application to manufacturing. So even though biology and the development of things that make differences to human outcomes take a long time, there are so many companies working on this space, we're gonna get so much in the way of data readouts, we're gonna be so much better informed and in the process, many companies will do very well. There'll be a lot of enterprise value created in certain areas from now over the next 12 months and a lot of value destruction. And it really comes down to three things. It comes down to excellent science. It comes down to excellent operations, the ability to take that science and translate it into something commercial. And it comes down to really having a regulatory regime and regulatory pathways that allow that science and allow that translation to be able to effectively go into humans and make a difference. So, we achieve a half miracle because for the first time in the Italian history, an Italian guy finished on time. <laughs> I look there and started on time. I, I, I seem Swiss, that is, a, but that is thanks to Joshua. I think uh, that point will be a point in which as a FII will continue to work. Thank you so much to everyone. Thank you all so much. Thank you.